Welcome to the Essential Self-Care Podcast, where we talk about all things self-care for those of us who are, let's face it, too busy for self-care. It's time to bring that same compassion that you offered everyone else in your life to yourself as well. In this podcast, you'll hear real life stories of how self-care transformed people's lives as they were going through life's storms. You'll learn practical, actionable tools to begin the self-care journey yourself as well. Because like I always say, small changes make a large impact. I'm your host, Dr. Sheetal Ajmani. I'm a physician, best-selling author, and the founder of Radiant Living Institute, where I guide people to get unstuck and learn to live radiantly again. Through my signature program, Reclaim Your Radiance, you'll reclaim your worth, renew your energy, and restore your happiness in your life, career, and relationships. To get started, download your free guidebook, Six Simple Yet Powerful Steps to Create Your Radiant Life at RadiantLivingInstitute.com. Quick disclaimer before we get started, the information in this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not medical advice. Always seek the advice of your own medical practitioner and or mental health provider about your specific situation. Now, let's get started. Today, I have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Heather Moday to the Essential Self-Care Podcast. Dr. Moday is a functional medicine physician, the founder of the Moday Center, and author of The Immunotype Breakthrough. We share the same approach and mindset that health is not just the absence of disease, but is a state of vitality, and I would also say radiance. While she works with people facing a variety of health concerns, she has a special interest in helping women in midlife improve their brain function and productivity. Today, Dr. Moday is going to share a bit about her self-care journey. Welcome to the Essential Self-Care Podcast, Dr. Moday. Thank you, Sheetal. It's really fun to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to dive into your self-care story and journey with our listeners. So I'd like to start off with asking you, could you describe a time in your life when self-care became no longer an option, but an absolute priority? What was going on at that time and what self-care modalities did you lean into? Sure. Yeah. So I worked in a a traditional sort of medical practice for about 10 years and I really started to get a little unsettled and I wanted to do something different. I got really interested in integrative medicine, functional medicine. So I started doing, I did a fellowship and more studying. And then I decided to start my own practice, which, you know, I knew nothing about starting my own business at the time. So, you know, between trying to hold down a full-time job you know, do this other work, you know, sort of more schoolwork and studying, and then also trying to figure out like, you know, how to build a website and, you know, really any, anything uh, regarding business. We weren't taught that back then. So I, uh, and when I first started the practice, it was, you know, it was really, it was scary because I had left a full-time job that was, that was very stable. And now I had to make my own money and, and do all that. And I really started to have a lot of sort of anxiety and concerns and fears and, and found that it was, I needed, it wasn't like, oh, you know, wouldn't it be nice to, to relax? It was like, no, I need to do something on a regular basis that, you know, sort of regulates my nervous system, can help with anxiety and sleep. And so that's really when I doubled down. And luckily, because I was doing an integrative medicine fellowship, I had learned a lot. And so I had a whole bunch of things to try out on myself. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, You're so right. So often we can be juggling multiple things at a time, right? You had the full-time job going, you were also studying in your fellowship, and then you were trying to learn the business side of it. And you're so right as well as physicians. We spend so much time in school, in residency, maybe fellowship, right? Just this long journey to becoming physicians, to learning what we need to know from the science side, from the medical side, not to mention also keeping up to date because things are always changing, new research is coming out and we're not taught that business side of it, right? And so that's like a whole other world then to dive into. And and you're right, there's a lot to learn. Things like even what you said, you know, building a website, right? I mean, you don't really think about it unless and until you're in a situation where you need to build a website. (laughs) And then it's like, how do I do this? And while also, again, still managing all of those other pieces. And and then I think you also brought up a really great point that I think a lot of people in a similar situation feel. I know I've felt it as well, right? Um, Similarly, also being a physician and an entrepreneur as well, right? Just that uncertainty, that anxiety that, and when you take a chance like that, right? It is a chance. Any, any sort of entrepreneurship journey is right. 
a lot of those kind of maybe fears, anxieties, limiting beliefs, things that maybe you never thought about before can start to come up. And as you mentioned, all of that, right, some of those fears, that uncertainty, feeling um, maybe unstable can then also have an effect on your nervous system as well. And so being in the fellowship that you were, you had access to a lot of tools to begin to work with that, begin to regulate your nervous system, begin to incorporate some tools that could have a long, long lasting impact on what you were going through in that situation and how you were feeling. So what were some of the first tools that you turned to? Yeah. So I, you know, I had been reading and, and sort of dabbling in self-care practices, but, you know, a lot of times just didn't make time for it. And, you know, when I started to feel this uncertainty and fear around like, you know, how am I going to pay myself and is my business going to fail? And then what am I going to do? You know, that really can get overwhelming. I started to use some of the practices that I'd sort of been taught. And so the, one of the first ones obviously is meditation. And, and you probably talk about this a lot. I know you, you meditate a lot and you, you teach it. And so, you know, we really sort of delved into the science of meditation in my fellowship and we're taught sort of different modalities. And so I just sort of ran with it. And I always say that you need to see to try it out and see what works, what sticks, right. And you should give it a few weeks to see whether or not, or not it helps you because you know, meditation is a practice, right? It um, is something that people who have been meditating for 20, 30, 40 years still sometimes struggle with. There's no right way to do it. And so I started out with guided meditations and body scans because guided meditations, especially if you can't shut your mind off, and many of us sort of have so much noise going on in our heads, if then there's so many options now. I mean, when I started this, there was no there was no headspace. There were no calm apps. Um, nothing like that. Right. I just sort of went on YouTube, right. And started listening to things or downloaded, you know, whatever MP3s from, from the internet. So, cause this is like, you know, 2014 or something. And I would just listen along and the body scan really is great for a beginning meditator too, because it gives you something to focus on, you know, just relaxation of different body parts in this sequential way. And then focusing on your breath. And then there's always mantra medica- meditations, which I dabbled with as well. And what I found is that if I could make sure that I was consistent with it, I would give myself small goals, like just do a 10 minute, 10 minute body scan a day, or just do a 10 minute mantra meditation a day. You know, it really started over a few weeks, I would start to look forward to it because I would feel better right after. But if I didn't continue doing it every day, Then after, you know, a week or so, I'd be like, well, I don't feel that relaxation effect anymore. So, you know, that's why it's really important to try to do it consistently. And I found it was tremendously helpful in just sort of grounding me and taking myself sort of out of that noise in my head. I love so much about what you shared. And yes, you're right. Of course, I'm a huge proponent of meditation. I have a daily meditation practice as well. But I'll admit as well, when I was starting out, it was it felt hard. It felt really hard. I started out with like seated meditation as we think of meditation generally these days in 2010. And so you're right. I didn't use an app. I didn't have any access to anything like that. It was literally me sitting on my yoga mat on the floor of my bedroom every morning. My goal was to do 15 minutes. That felt like a struggle. So I changed my goal to five minutes. That still felt like a struggle, but I sat with it. And similar to you, I started to notice that I felt different on the days that I wasn't doing it. And that's what ended up fueling my motivation to continue with it. And now I have a a daily meditation practice. I also love that you mentioned the body scan. I think that can be a really helpful tool as well. That's something that I include actually in all of my yoga classes when I'm teaching yoga, because I think it can just be so helpful. And one thing that came to me when you were sharing that also is that you were in this space of feeling very ungrounded, unsettled was the word that you had used Mm -hmm. and finding ways to what you had also mentioned of kind of regulating your nervous system. And so really kind of grounding with that meditation and getting into your body, like just having that body awareness and cultivating that mind body connection. Um, I can see on so many levels how that could be, could be helpful. You described a little bit about some of the benefits that you found through, through doing that. Can you share a little bit more about, about that of just kind of how you felt Mm -hmm. over time with doing it, any other results you saw and, or if that maybe also led you to other practices? 
Yeah, I would say that, you know, not what's interesting about meditation is sometimes when you sit down and you do it, you don't always feel relaxed. I mean, sometimes it, it, it brings things up, right? But I, I think that's helpful. I think that sometimes it allows you to then pay attention to maybe certain parts of your life that need more care or attention. So I can't say that every time I would meditate, I'd feel blissful, but I would say that it would help me in some way, help me focus on maybe, okay, there's an area of my life I'm not paying attention to, or there's, you know, there's a something that I need to attend to, whether it's a relationship or something I've been ignoring. And so that is extremely helpful. I think it allows you to get quiet. And when you get quiet, it really allows you to focus on just like, okay, what's going on in my body? What's going on in my brain? So I think it's just like a really great tool for just living life in general. But I would say that generally doing it uh, on a regular basis made me less reactionary, more able to, if I was in a difficult situation to sort of go back and say, okay, I feel how I'm feeling. I'm feeling tense. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling overwhelmed. What can I do? Okay. Well, let's think back to meditation. Okay. I can breathe. You know, I can take a couple of breaths. I can sort of calm myself down and say, okay, I know that I'm not going to feel this way forever. So I think it's, it's a good practice because it allows you to remember that your body is able to get into a state of relaxation and calm and that you're not always going to feel the way that you're feeling in that moment. Such great perspectives there, really such great perspectives. So I love that you found that you were less reactive in stressful situations, which is great. And also that having this meditation practice that you were doing on your own a few minutes a day at home, what that also did is it also gave you these tools that you could come back to even in the midst of those stressful situations, like, oh, wait, I've practiced this tuning into my breath before. I remember what that feels like, right? I can turn to that tool right now. And so I think that's really valuable is that yes, meditation can be a practice that you set aside some time for to do on a regular basis. And then it also helps you build that self-awareness within yourself, help build your familiarity with some of these tools that you can then use and turn to. And that is sort of built into your memory as well, into your mind memory, but also your body memory, right? And to turn to in the stressful situation. Another really interesting perspective that I feel you shared that I, I think is really helpful and will be really helpful for many of our listeners is that you always found meditation to be helpful, not always blissful, but helpful. And I think that's such an important distinction. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because I think sometimes we can have this perception that if we start practicing self-care or we hear so much about meditation, if we start this meditation practice, that you're just going to feel all of your problems are going to go away. You're going to feel completely happy and blissful all of the time. Nothing should upset you anymore right? And we put a lot of pressure on ourselves that that's how we're supposed to feel because, hey, I meditate every day, right? And I can speak from my own experience because I have had moments that I felt that, right? Like, hey, I shouldn't be feeling this. I meditate every day, right? I personally have have experienced that (laughs) and had to work through that myself as well. And so I think this is just such a great distinction that, no, you know, these self-care tools, they aren't necessarily going to make all the problems go away. They aren't going to make challenges not arise in your life because that's just part of life. But these self-care tools can help you navigate those situations. They can help you, like you said, maybe be a little bit less reactive in those Mm -hmm. situations, maybe find ways to tune into more inner clarity and tuning into yourself when you in regards to how you're going to respond in those situations. So I think that was just a really important distinction that you made for our listeners. Yeah. I mean, I find that if anything, you learn a lot about yourself when you meditate, which I think is important. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It all starts with awareness, like anything, any sort of change we want to make in our life or personal development or improvement, really it all starts with awareness. And I agree with you completely. Meditation helps you cultivate and harness that self-awareness um, and awareness is key. So for our listeners out here, you've, you've already given so many great nuggets of advice as well as, and I'll just pull some of those out actually for our listeners. Cause I was going to ask you, 
kind of what advice you have for someone who's just starting out. So I'm going to come back to that in a second, because I'm going to go ahead and start to kind of pull out some of the nuggets that you already shared about that. One thing that you shared is start small and set small goals for yourself. I think that's a really valuable nugget with regards to just starting out. Another thing that you shared was that so often we try to like stop all of the thoughts. <laughs> and that can be really hard. So, so using something like, and, and really, truly, that's not the goal of meditation either. It's to refocus that mm -hmm. awareness, refocus those thoughts. So starting with something like guided meditations, having some sort of consistency with your practice. Is there any other sort of nuggets or pieces of advice that you would have to someone who may be listening to this episode saying, Hey, I want to give that a try. Any other piece of advice that you would give them starting out on that? Well, I mean, I think the most important is not to really have huge expectations, you know, uh, to give yourself like a challenge, say like, I'm going to do this for 30 days. It doesn't matter how I feel when I'm done with it. I'm going to do it for five minutes, you know, almost like a challenge. And at the end of the 30 days, you can sort of reassess and say, how did that make me feel? What, what benefits did I have? And, you know, so there's lots of great options to do that. I mean, you know, now we have so much technology that you could, you know, you can get what, seven days of headspace or 14 days of headspace or whatever, you can get, you can use some apps that are free that have just really easy, almost like meditation beginning courses, so many different things. So give yourself the time, make it a challenge for yourself, but don't, don't be sort of attached to the outcome of what happens and, you know, allow yourself to be sort of surprised. That's great. That's great. Yeah. One thing, well, a couple of things I always say, one thing is that small changes make a large impact. So just those small actions consistently. And then this, another thing that I often say is become a student of your life, you know, just, mm -hmm. and I love that. And I know you shared that a little bit earlier too, of just like, try something out, give yourself a week or two weeks or three weeks just to try it out and notice how you feel. How do you feel on the days that you do it? How do you feel on the days that you don't do it? And just for our listeners, another resource there's as you mentioned, there's so many resources, but just to share another resource. I do have a resource on my website, uh, radiantlivinginstitute.com for people who are getting started with meditation. I go through a little bit of the background of just things to know when you're starting a meditation, as well as a few guided meditation practices. So for our listeners, that is a resource available to you as well. And Dr. Moday, if anyone wants to learn a little bit more about you and the wonderful work that you are doing, where can they find you? So the best way to find out about me and what I do do it in terms of my practice is at my website, which is www.modaycenter.com. And I, I work with people in um, certain states via telemed. Um, we also have uh, an amazing nutritionist who works with um, people remotely. And then I also have a small office in Norfolk, Virginia, where I see people in person. So that's more for the clinical side. And then if people want to follow me on Instagram, I tend to do, I tend to put a lot of education out there. I really love to do that. And so they can go to my Instagram channel, basically, which is Dr. Heather Moday at Dr. Heather Moday, I should say. And, uh, and yeah, and then can I always direct message me. I always, I always get back to people. So wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'll include all of those links in the show notes. And as Dr. Moday mentioned, we both live in Norfolk. So we're friends. So we, uh, you know, get together often, which is lovely. She's a wonderful person doing wonderful work. So definitely check out her website. Definitely check out her Instagram. She posts um, very regularly, a lot of interesting, informative and fun posts. So definitely follow her on Instagram. And thank you again for being here. Thank you. It's been so much fun. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe, leave a positive review, and share this episode with someone you know. And remember, your free guide, Six Simple Yet Powerful Steps to Create Your Radiant Life, is waiting for you at radiantlivinginstitute.com. Download it today.